Hey everybody, how's it going? So, I want to go over something called Gameplay Ability Systems. And to do so, I think this will be a few videos, not just one, because I'm going to separate them out. It's a little bit more complicated than what we've done before. I'm going to start with just the code, and then we'll go into the editor and see how it all works. To begin with, I have created a bare bones project using just the assets and the animation. Um, I've taken out the things that we did previously, like punch, uh, as well as the squash logic, because I want those to be used with the gameplay ability system. One big part of why I decided to switch is because uh, networking and replication are already part of the gameplay ability system, so why reinvent the wheel when Unreal Engine already does that stuff for us? So, let's get to it. First things first, in the build.cs file for your project, you need some public dependencies. You need gameplay abilities, gameplay tags, and gameplay tasks. These will allow you to access the modules that we need for the gameplay ability system. Next, before we go into the editor, open up your data file or make a data file, an uh, just another header, and we're going to need an enumerator. So make a blueprint type enum class, and we're gonna call this E hopper ability input ID. And inside of here, we need um, three things that you're always gonna need, and then the ability that we're going to do. So, you need to have a none, a confirm, a cancel, and then the ability that we're going to make uh, for some input is punch. We don't need to put squash in here because squash is just going to be an effect that happens, whereas punch is going to be bound to the mouse button, so that's why that's in here. With that done, we can go ahead and compile and open up the editor because we need to make some C++ classes. When the editor opens, make sure you have the Gameplay Abilities plugin enabled as well. Next, we're going to add a new C++ class and you want to look for Ability System Component. Name it however you want to name it. And I'm going to put it in public slash core slash components. Once that's made, we're going to make another one. This is going to be called Gameplay Ability. Search, scroll to the bottom, find just the Gameplay Ability, name it, and this will go in public core slash abilities. And the last C++ class we need is an attribute set. Name it again. put it where it needs to go. Okay, those are the classes that we need at the moment. We're gonna start with the attribute set. And the attribute set is things like health, stamina, attack power, mana, depending on what you're making. I think we're just going to do health for now. Um, this can always be expanded later. Okay, first up at the top in our header file for the attribute set, we need to make some macros. And these come out of the attributes.h header. These are just little helpers that kind of do what they say they do. They fill out with much more fancy code so that you don't need to do it. So attribute accessors, attribute accessors to access and you pass in the class name and the property name. Gameplay attribute property getter. And again, we're passing in a class name and then the property name that we're getting. We need a value getter, so gameplay attribute value getter. Just pass in the property name for this macro. And when you have a getter, you need to have a setter. And then the last, you want an initializer, so value initter and again, pass the property name. Those are the five macros you need in your attribute set. Come down below, make a public section, constructor, and then you're going to need the get lifetime replicated props function 
This override allows us to select which attributes uh, replicate for the engine. And then the actual attributes themselves, you're gonna have your standard U property header, this macro here. It's a blueprint read only, and it's replicated using, and we say on rep, and this is the health attribute. And then we're gonna put this in a category of attributes. This is a gameplay attribute data struct, and we'll name it health. Now underneath is where we use the macro. We do attribute accessors, and we pass in the name of our class, and then the property name. Now because we've said it's replicated using on rep health, we also need to make a function down below called on rep health. And in here, what we have to pass is the actual value. So f gameplay attribute data by reference, and we'll just say old value. Up at the top, make sure you've put in the ability system component include. So that creates our health attribute, and it creates a replicated function that gets called every time the health changes. Let's go ahead and make our definitions. We don't need to do anything in the constructor, but in the get lifetime replicated props is where we need to do this macro, which is included in the net unreal network. So make sure you include that to get access to it. Do rep lifetime, pass in the class name, and then the property name again. Now health is going to be tracked by the system as a replicated variable. Inside the function on rep health, we need to use another macro, and this is called gameplay attribute rep notify. Pass the class name, the property name, and then the parameter name. Okay, come over to your gameplay ability class now. And in here, we just need a few things first make the constructor and then abilities activate when input is pressed so we need to give the ability an actual Im ability input ID from our data set so it knows what it's looking for to activate this is a blueprint read only edit anywhere I'll put it in a category of abilities we're looking for our e hopper ability input ID. Make sure you include the data file that requires it. We're going to call it ability input ID, and we're going to initialize it by default to none. Make sure you create the constructor in the implementation, even if it's blank. Otherwise, you're going to get an error when it tries to compile. All right, so now let's work on our character class. What we need to actually do is implement the ability system interface. So put that after your character inheritance and make sure that ability system interface is included up here. We're gonna create a couple forward declarations here. We're gonna need the gameplay ability as well as our ability system component and our attribute set. We're gonna need three class overrides. The first one is the possessed by function. The second one is on rep player state function. And the last one is the setup player input component function. Go ahead and make the definitions for each of these. Let's make a new section for our ability system. With the interface for the ability system, we need to do an override for that interface. This returns an ability system component, and it's called get ability system component. Create the definition for that as well. If you have a component section, drop down to it. If you want to keep these together, this is getting a little scattered. I might reorganize where these live, but create a little macro and this is going to be a t object pointer of our u hopper ability system component and call it the ability system component next we actually need our attributes so another t object pointer of the u hopper attribute set 
call this attributes. When the game starts, we have our attributes, but they're not initialized to any values. So in order to do that, we need to create a gameplay effect that starts at the beginning of the game and overrides our values. We're gonna make a U property of edit defaults only, blueprint read only, and we're gonna put it in the abilities category. This is gonna be a T array of T subclass of U gameplay effect, which will require the gameplay effect header. And this is called passive gameplay effects. Now we also wanna give abilities to our player, such as the punch ability. So we're gonna make another U property of edit anywhere this time. Blueprint read only. And the category is again in the ability section. This is another T array of T subclass of. This time it's our special hopper gameplay ability. And call this gameplay abilities. Also make sure that you spell category correctly. And I'm gonna make one more little helper here. Just a bool of B abilities initialized one bit. Go to your implementation and we're going to work our way down. So first things first, that bool needs to be set to false by default. At the bottom of your constructor, we need to initialize that ability system component. Create a default sub object of U hopper ability system component. Call it the ability system or whatever you want. Make sure that we include that header in our implementation since we only forward declared it in our header. Get that ability system component and we're gonna set it to be replicated. And then the ability system component, set the replication mode and we're gonna use the E gameplay effect replication mode minimal enum. This is just kind of like a server thing. Um, minimal, it replicates the minimal amount of gameplay. Uh, if you do a single player game, you can set that to full, but it's, I think, optimal to leave it at minimal. Last, our attributes needs to also have a create default sub object call. This is our U hopper attribute set, and we'll call that attributes. Also include the hopper attribute set header. Come down to our possessed by beneath the super call. We need to initialize the gameplay ability system on the server. So possessed by is when the controller comes in. So this is this is server only. So the ability system component, if we have it, check for a null pointer first. We're going to call init ability actor info. We're going to pass in the owning actor, and then the in avatar actor is also ourselves. In the on rep player state, we want to call that as well so that we get this for the client side. Now for our controls, we need to bind the confirm and the cancel to our input component. So we're gonna get the ability system component and check it. We're also going to check the input component. If those are real pointers or pointing to some memory somewhere, we're going to create a gameplay ability input binds, call it binds. And what we want to put in here is our confirm and our cancel. We need to name what the enum is where those live. So it's the e hopper ability input ID for me. Make sure that's spelled correctly. And then we want to static cast to an int 32 those enums. So e hopper ability input ID, the confirm first. And then again, static cast int 32. E hopper ability input ID cancel. Last, we need to bind those. So get the ability system component, call bind ability activation to input component. Pass the input component and pass the binds. Now, because things can get called out of order, we want to take that and then call it also and set a player input component because between these two, you might get the player state first, 
or you might get the input component so the input component is not ready yet um, or it hasn't constructed so having them called in both of these is just a redundancy to make sure that this actually happens for the get ability system component function we just need to return our ability system component how do we give our startup gameplay abilities to the character we need one more function come back to your header we're going to make a new function called void add startup gameplay abilities we're going to run a check on our ability system component make sure that we have it now we want to get our local role and we want to be the authority and we want to make sure that our abilities are not initialized now we're going to grant abilities but only on the server that's what we're doing here we're going to make a for each loop to go through each startup ability in our gameplay abilities array so for each sub t subclass of the u hopper gameplay ability by reference the startup we're going to call it startup ability in the gameplay abilities array for each of those we're going to call this ability system component a function called give ability which wants a gameplay ability spec and the constructor for the gameplay ability spec wants that startup ability it wants a level we're just going to do one here and the third parameter we need to static cast to an int 32 we want to get the ability input ID so get the startup ability we're going to get a default object off of that startup ability and out of the out of the startup ability this is where we grab that input ability ID that variable that we created last we want to pass in the object the source object which is us this now we want to apply passives and this is going to be the array that overrides our attributes with effects such as make our health into a hundred so we need another for each loop or range based for loop is what it's actually called so this is looking for gameplay effects a t subclass of them by reference and we're going to call that gameplay effect and it's inside of our passive gameplay effects array we need to make a gameplay effect context handle. Call this the effect context. And this is set to the ability system component. Call the make effect context function. And the effect context, we're adding a source object and it's this. What that effect context handle is doing is it's a wrapper around our effect context. So all the information the context around this effect that allows it to be polymorphic as well as replicate over network so you want that handle uh, for the engine now we also need to have a gameplay effect spec handle which is another wrapper and this is the new handle and it's using the ability system component called the make outgoing spec function and this function wants the effect inside of our array the level and then we want to pass in that context handle that we created now we check to make sure that that handle that that new handle we made is valid make another struct this time an active gameplay effect handle and this active gameplay effect handle this active gameplay effect handle is the ability system component we're going to call the function apply gameplay effect spec to target so that first that first variable is the new handle holds data and that data is a t shared pointer so we have to call get in order to get the actual pointer out and then we're dereferencing it and then you need to pass the ability system component as itself clean up some stuff here that I missed get rid of any errant parentheses and make sure this is all correct this is grayed out because we're not actually using this variable but we're creating one just in case so you could actually just call that but in the future we may actually use that effect handle differently 
A lot of this code is being taken directly out of the Action RPG example project from Epic, and that is the project to go to and look at the source code if you want to understand the gameplay ability system uh, deeper and with more complexity. There's a lot going on in there. Once we've done all that, we actually want to set our bool to true so that we know that our abilities have been initialized. So that's it for the basic code of how to set up the gameplay ability system. Now I've saved the most complicated part for last because this is a little bit extra and this comes out of the action RPG itself. When I first created this and I was punching around the bad guys, the health, the way we've set it up, the health will drop down once we put it together. But there's going to be no event when the health hits zero. So if we want to actually have our bad guys die, so we need to have some functionality that triggers some events in the editor uh, when the health changes. We need to make some blueprint implementable events. The first one is void on damaged. And this is going to take a variety of parameters. First is the damage amount. The next is a hit result, the hit info. We're going to need a const struct of f gameplay tag container reference called damage tags. We want the character that is the instigator. And we need an actor, which is the damage causer. We'll need one more blueprint implementable event, and this is a void on health changed. This takes the delta value and const struct f gameplay tag container by reference event tags. All right, quite a mouthful. These are comments that came from the Action RPG project where these functions came from. So on damaged is called when the character takes damage, which may have killed them. And on health changed is called when the health is changed, either, for, either from healing or from being damaged. Now we need two more functions, and these are called from the attribute set itself, which then call the blueprint events above. So the first is virtual void handle damage, and this has the same parameters. And then virtual void handle health changed, which again uses these parameters. Go ahead and make the definitions for these two. In order for our attribute set to be able to call these, we actually need to call friend uhopper attribute set here. So handle damage just calls on damaged, and then it passes the damage amount, the hit info, the damage tags, the instigator character, as well as the damage causer. And handle health changed. We check first to make sure our abilities have been initialized, and then we call on health changed and pass the delta value and the event tags. Okay, let's return to our attribute set. We're gonna add a new attribute, so just copy this, paste it, and we're gonna call this max health and max health. And with the functions down below, on rep, max health, and we're done. Copy that line, paste it there, and pass max health. So to check if we have died when our health hits zero, there is a function that we can override called virtual void post gameplay effect execute. In our gameplay effect execute, first we're going to make a context handle again. And this is set to the data coming in. We get the spec off that data and we're going to get the context from that effect spec. We need to make a pointer to an ability system component, call this source, and we get the context and we get the original instigator ability system component. They've got functions for everything. Last, we also are going to want a gameplay tag container. 
And this is a reference to the source tags which are held in the data. Effect spec capture source tags. Get aggregate tags. Create a delta value. Initialized to zero. First, we're going to check the modifier on our data. And we're going to check if that gameplay mod op, if its type was additive. And if so, our delta value is going to be the magnitude of that evaluated data. So this is where we would say our damage is negative 20. It's additive, but it's negative 20, so it's taking away. So now we have stored our damage, our punch of negative 20 into our delta value. Make a hopper base character pointer, call it the target character. Initialize it to a null pointer, just in case. Now we want to get the target and the ability actor info. Check to make sure it's valid. As well as the data target ability actor info avatar actor and make sure that's valid as well. Make a new target actor, an A actor pointer. Initialize to null pointer. This is our target. And our target actor is going to be the data, the target, the ability actor info, and that avatar actor. And then we need to get the actual raw pointer off of it. And then our target character, we're going to cast to a hopper base character, that target actor. So now we've stored the target character pointer. We're going to check if the evaluated data, if the attribute in the evaluated data is the health attribute. So we're checking if we're modifying the health. So first we want to set the health and we need to clamp it. We get the health, the current health we're clamping the minimum to be zero, and we're getting our max health. And we check if we have a target character that is valid. And then we get that target character and we're calling handle health change. So that's where we pass in the delta value, so the damage that we're doing, and any source tags that might be valid. So there's the kind of complex function. This is called after a gameplay effect executes, thus the name. And hopefully it was pretty straightforward. It is just going through and calling the appropriate function so that we can actually do some more stuff such as kill the character if we've hit zero in the editor. Hey everyone, uh, I lied. There's a little bit more that we need to do in order to make our health and max health work. There's another function to override called virtual void pre attribute change. That's gonna be called when you think before we change an attribute. And one more function called adjust attribute for max change. What this function will do is when we adjust the value of an attribute, um, it will proportionally adjust. So our, if our max health increases, health will proportionally um, be reset to match to the max health. This needs to take a const f gameplay attribute data reference of the affected attribute a const f gameplay attribute data reference of the max attribute a float of a new max value a const f gameplay attribute reference of the affected attribute property and it's a const function pre is easy if the attribute is equal to get max health attribute, we're gonna call that adjust attribute for max change, pass the health, max health, the new value coming in, and get the health attribute. For the adjust attribute for max change function, we are going to make an ability system component pointer called the ability comp. We're gonna get the owning ability system component, a const float of the current max value, which is our max attribute, get the current value of our max attribute, which is, for example, our max health, if, and call f math. if we're not nearly equal, we have to do this for floats, so the first float is our current max value, and then the second float is the new max value, 
and we check if our ability component pointer is valid. We're going to change the values. So const float current value is equal to the affected attribute dot get current value. Const float new delta. The new delta is going to be checking. So we're going to check our current max value. Is it greater than zero? If so, the new delta will be set to current value times the new max value divided by the current max value minus the current value. And if not, we're just setting it to the new max value. Then we need to apply it. So apply mod to attribute unsafe is the uh, function we want to call. We pass the affected attribute property. We do a gameplay mod op enum of additive and we pass the new delta. So that was required in order to properly handle our health situation. I just wanted to throw that in there because I went and tested the code um, and things wouldn't work in the next video unless these were applied. So that's it for this video. A lot of code writing. I'm going to save the editor work for the next video because this is getting a little long. Um, until next time, play around with the action RPG. Look at the code understand it, maybe mess around with it. You can make more attributes if you want. If you've got a spell system or something, add mana, um, play with attack power, write your own functions. We'll come back to this next time. See ya.